The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you could have anything in the world, what would it be? Wealth? Fame? Wisdom? Freedom? If you could choose among all the things men desire, what would your choice be? Authorities are asking for the public's help on identifying members of the underground Christian radical groups. Citizens with information are urged to contact police. Rewards are being offered for information leading to arrests. Long ago, when my grandfather was a child, the world was a different place. I have never seen that world, but I have heard stories, seen pictures, read the books written by those men and women. If I could reach back in time and speak to those people who came before us, I would tell them that in the whisper of a secret prayer, it would all change. I would beg them to listen to me to my story. My name is Annalise. This is my world. Today, my brother's friend was taken away. It happens a lot, and yet, each time someone is arrested, everything seems to stop. We heard they intercepted a message he sent someone seems like such a little thing, sending a message. But the truth is, they can track almost everything. If you want to send messages to other believers, you have to be really careful. Sometimes we use codes, but even that can be dangerous. The police are always watching us. We are always watched, always chased. My grandfather told me that once, long ago, people could gather publicly together to worship. Huge stone cathedrals with bells ringing through the morning would call them together. They'd sing hymns, voices rising in unison with no fear of being caught. What would that many voices sound like, all singing together?
must gather in secret. Sometimes there are three or four families. Sometimes only two. But whenever we are all together, we worship. My father leads us in prayer or reads from the Bible. And every once in a while, someone teaches us an old hymn. Our voices only sing in whispers. But to me, the sound is beautiful. I heard about Daniel's arrest this morning. My brother Finn slipped into the kitchen and told us he'd been taken away. What can you say? What can you do? It's up to Daniel. We prayed for his safety. We asked God to protect him. My brother cried. It's hard to see your big brother crying. Crying isn't something to be ashamed of, but this time it was worse. Daniel Fink was three weeks and two days older than my brother. His best friend. Now he's gone. Will they come for us today? Will they find something at Daniel's house that leads them here? Could someone from my family be the next to disappear and never return? Lily, Daniel's sister, is my friend. We share so many memories together. So many moments that keep replaying in my mind. Will it ever be the same again? Lily's name is in the book I keep tucked under my mattress. Once, when we were eight years old, we wrote our wishes for the future into that book. Childish wishes that seem so unimportant now. Lily's wish was to fly around the world in a hot air balloon with her brother. I don't know where she wanted to go or what she wanted to see. I don't remember my wish. If I could go back, I'd wish that Daniel, Fink, and Lily could fly away together. Far away from here to a place where we aren't always afraid. I'd wish for that more than anything else. But the truth is, once someone is arrested, they never come back. is here. I know he is. God cannot be erased, no matter how many laws they pass saying otherwise. But I pray that he will rescue us. I pray that he will give us a world where once again we can gather in stone cathedrals without fear of someone hearing. I pray that someday they will stop chasing us. But mostly I pray for Lily and her mother. Tonight, I hope God hears their prayers the most. Last night, my brother Finn ran away. My parents thought he didn't even say goodbye. They're wrong. He did but only under the cover of darkness. I know why he left. I know why so many friends and family leave. They're afraid. Fear burns inside them, consuming them. 
erasing all the hope out of their hearts. Fear is the monster we can never hide from. Do I blame Finn? How can I? How can I blame him for being afraid? But how could he leave me? How could he run away from God? Finn didn't just run away. It's not as simple as that. Now we have to worry even more. We pray for his safety. And we fear that something he might say will lead them to us. Betrayal is almost worse than being chased. Finn told me once that he'd always protect me. He told me he'd always be there and that I'd never be alone. But now he is gone. Doesn't he know that leaving us could mean exposing us? Is that what he wants? I know there have been some who have left only to bring about the downfall of those they loved. Is that what happened to Daniel Fink? Did he send a message without thinking? Fear made Peter betray Jesus three times. Why are you doing this? You need to come home. Fear is the enemy of faith. Finn, why did you leave us? For as long as the world has existed, Finn. fear has tried to separate us from God. Do you realize what you're walking away from? I am afraid now. Afraid that Finn will not be strong enough. Fear will make you wish you didn't have a brother and that you could run away too. Fear is a terrible thing. It makes them, makes us, do things that we don't understand. Fear is here now, more than it ever was before. Finn might have run away from one fear, but it has been replaced with something even worse. For him, for me, for all of us. How can we run away from something that is everywhere, all at once? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. In days long gone, weddings were planned for months in advance. Brides fretted about their flowers, music, dinner menus, important details that needed to be just perfect, just right. We plan weddings months in advance too, but not to make sure the dress arrives in time or to give the baker plenty of notice, no. We plan months in advance to ensure we won't be caught. Our weddings might be secret, but they are still occasions for great joy. Though the curtains may be drawn against spying eyes, there's a feeling of excitement and anticipation in the air. My father told me once that marriage was one of the greatest gifts God has given us. And I like the part of the ceremony when he says, what God has joined, let no man put asunder. And yet, sometimes weddings can be our greatest risk, our greatest fear. 
Whenever we gather together for a wedding ceremony, we have to be very careful. There are more of us together during weddings, and it is harder to keep that a secret. Finn used to be the one to watch the street and look for suspicious cars or people that might be out looking for us. But tonight, Finn isn't here. We all know of someone who has been lost. We all know of someone who has paid the ultimate price. Even during times of great joy, these things are never far from our minds. Marquise, you may now kiss your brother. It is my privilege and my honor to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Middleton. But we still celebrate because without hope and faith, what else is there? Do you have a memory of the last happy moment before something terrible happened? For me, it was with Lily. Lily was smiling again. Not the same smile as before, but she smiled. I always knew that someday they would come. I always knew that it might happen on a night like this. When two lives were just beginning a new chapter together. I always knew it would happen. But I wasn't ready. could turn it back just one more time do you remember the last good thing the last happy moment. I do. How much pain can you feel? Before you can understand the source. How can the silence around you, the silence in your mind, how can that, that, be louder than the screams of people you love? Leave him alone! Take me! I'm the one you want! Please just leave him alone! Leave him alone! You're gonna be okay! You're gonna be okay! Oh no. We're gonna take him <laughs>
Where is God now? Where is he? As I watch them take no, away everything. No. Why have you forsaken me, God? No, no, no. If you're there, and you see the sins of this world, why do you let us continue to hurt each other? We have tried to do the right things. We have tried to live the right way. And still, the sins of this world separate us from you. Do you remember the last good memory before everything disappeared? I do. People will do these things to you because they have not known either the Father or me. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. For years He'd searched for me. They'd taken me away to a place where I was supposed to be safe from the influences of Christianity. hard to imagine what those years must have been like for him, knowing that he had played a part in destroying everything that I'd ever known. I don't think he expected sympathy, but through the grace and forgiveness of Christ, he had found peace. My brother's faith, his imperfect, flawed human faith was able to be renewed by a God who is so much more powerful than the fear that had grown inside his heart. And yet he was haunted. Haunted by the thought that I might have lost my faith among everything else. Wondering if he'd caused me to lose my faith was more painful than any other grief he'd felt. Time turned back again, and I found myself back in the place where once, long ago, fear had separated us. And then, one day he found me. He didn't know if I'd recognize him, or if I did, if I'd hate him. But he knew he had to try. He had to reach out to me, his little sister, and try to repair the wrongs of years gone by. He told me about how God found him again and helped restore faith into his heart. He told me about all the nights that he'd prayed for my safety and how he'd hoped to find me again. He told me about the pain he felt every day from watching our parents be killed and the guilt from knowing that his fear was a catalyst for all that had happened. Forgiveness is a funny thing. It doesn't erase all the pain and it doesn't erase all the memories. But in the end, forgiveness is our only real choice. Forgiveness is the greatest gift God has ever given us. Finn told me he was leading a small group of believers in spreading the gospel. He wanted to know if I was still a believer or if my faith had been shattered on that night long ago. How can he not know the answer to this question? Does he really have to ask?
I have prayed for this moment every night since the last time I saw my brother. We may be chased, but we cannot be silenced. And so we go, as those before us have done. We go because we can't do otherwise. The way is not always easy, but we are never promised an easy path. We go because we are always chased. Chased by the one who loves us even more.